so many good looking beautiful people here today and we appreciate your worship into the wonderful name of the Lord. Can you remain standing with me for the reading of the word of the Lord? It's just an honor to be here with you at Goodlessville Pentecostal Church, GPC. And we are looking forward to what the Lord is going to do, not only today, not just this morning, this evening, but we're believing God for the remainder of this week that great things are going to happen. Turn to somebody and tell them God's got some great things for us. Now turn somebody else that believes it and tell them God's got some great things for us. Amen. I'm believing God for miracles, signs, and wonders, lives to be changed. I believe that God's going to speak to us specifically and that the will of God is going to be done. If you believe that, can you shout hallelujah? Thank you, praise team, for leading us into the presence of the Lord. Amen. How many of you are thankful for the anointing that was on this worship team? Praise God. Amen. Amen. There's nothing that can compare to the presence of the Lord. If you have your Bibles, I want to direct your attention to the book of Romans chapter 9. Romans chapter 9, verses 21 through 24. And while you're locating that, whether in printed form or digital form, just want to say how much we love and appreciate your pastor, his wife and family. I give honor to pastor and sister Zuniga. Amen. And their three sons. Can you clap your hands and thank the Lord for them? Your pastor is so well respected in the apostolic movement in the United Pentecostal Church. And I just appreciate his walk with God, his discernment, amen, his genuineness. I thank the Lord for his wife and how they love people. Amen. I, I can tell immediately when I heard the words of your pastor, say, you know, Brother Hagan, you can stay back here, but I'm going to go among the people. I, it's just what I do. He loves you. He loves this community, and I appreciate that about your pastor, his wife, and family. Once again, can you clap your hands and thank the Lord for Pastor Sister Zuniga? Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And to all the wonderful staff here, love Brother Dan Russell. Amen. He just makes me smile. I appreciate Brother Russell and his family and all of those. I know Brother Billy Haley is ministering uh, today. Just thank the Lord for all of those that are on this staff and appreciate them. Can you shout, thank you, Jesus for our leadership can somebody shout thank you Jesus for our leadership amen Romans chapter 9 verses 21 through 24 have not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor what if God willing to show his wrath and to make his power known endured with much long suffering, the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction, and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he had afore prepared unto glory. Even us, whom he hath called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. He's the potter. He could do whatever he desires to do. One vessel of honor, one vessel of dishonor, one vessel of wrath. But verse number 23 is where I want to focus your attention. And that he might make known the riches. Can somebody say the riches? The riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he had afore prepared unto glory. Here on this first service of these special services, I don't want to so much preach to you as much as I desire to minister to you here today. I believe that the Spirit of God has already prepared the table for what He desires to do in this place. And so if you allow me to, on this first service of this revival, to minister the Word of the Lord to somebody here today. One more time, can you place your Bibles, your tablets, your smartphones down? And can you lift up your hands towards heaven? And can you ask the Lord to continue to have His way in your life today? In the name of the Lord Jesus. 
We thank you for your presence, oh God. We thank you for your anointing that is in this house. We're asking, oh Lord, that you anoint the ministry of your word as your word is already anointed. Anoint your servant, oh God. Anoint this congregation to hear your word, to receive your word, and to respond to your word. And with this threefold court of anointing, may you destroy every yoke of bondage. And we will not fail to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Can somebody now clap your hands and can somebody to lift up your voice and can somebody declare it in the name of Jesus praise God turn somebody and tell them God's going to do something for us today God bless you if you are a guest in this house we are so delighted that you have come to be with GPC and we give you honor today can we clap our hands and thank the Lord for all of our guests Amen. It's so good to see the sweet psalmist. Amen. Sister Karen Harding here today. Can you clap your hands and thank the Lord for her? Appreciate her ministry. Amen. Brother Joel Breedlove, where are you, Brother Joel? Amen. Can you clap your hands for Brother Joel Breedlove? Serving our country. Preached revival for his father uh, in Jefferson City, Missouri. Had a great time. And I give you honor. So good to see my fellow evangelists here today, Brother Philip Miller. Amen. And his family, can you clap your hands and thank the Lord for them? Praise God. Amen. Amen. I'm just delighted for what the Lord is going to do. Can I just tell somebody, I just feel uh, a check in my spirit here today to tell somebody in this place that God knows exactly where you are. He knows what you've been going through and specifically to what's coming before you. There's somebody here, I don't know what the legal issue that is in your situation, but I come to tell somebody here today that the battle is not yours, but it is the Lord. God is going to bring victory to somebody in a legal manner. I know what the church is going through has already been mentioned, but I come to tell somebody as an individual, I just felt in the Holy Ghost to tell you that God is going to intervene on your, your behalf. He's going to work uh, in your situation. And before it's all said and done, God is going to give you favor. Can somebody clap their hands and can somebody shout amen? Oh, praise God. It's called, it's called Kinzuki, the Japanese art of fixing broken pottery. It comes from two words meaning golden rejoining. More specifically, kintsuki is the technique for restoring broken things with lacquer and decorating the cracks with gold. Instead of covering up the flaws, it beautifies the breakage. The patterned gold highlights the fracture as an important part of the object's history. The lacquer cracks are covered with gold to transform the pottery into a special object which will be used and preserved for a long time. When finished, the repaired pottery displays a unique appearance that tells a story. Each scene, a beautiful golden glint, reflects a crack of ceramic wares which says to those who look on, I have been restored. If you are here today and you have come into this place broken or if you are feeling shattered, I've just come to lift up my voice and tell you here this morning, uh, amen, that you are in the right place, uh, that it is here that the Lord can put your life back together again. Uh, it is here that the Lord can restore. Has anybody been restored? Can you clap your hands as a testimony to somebody else uh, that God can restore you? Can I tell somebody here today that the grace and mercy of God can do a work in your life that will restore you and repurpose your pain. Maybe you're watching online and you're sitting there in pain, internal pain, mental pain, pain in your soul. But can I tell somebody in this place that God can take that pain. He can take, amen, that trouble. He can take that storm. He can take, amen, the things that have happened in your past. And the Bible says that he can work all things together for his good to those uh, who are called according uh, to his purpose can somebody clap your hands uh, and can somebody shout amen I come to let somebody know in this house that you don't have to leave here hopelessly broken but that in this house you can be graciously healed and restored if you're believing for God to do that 
for somebody's life today maybe it's your own life can you lift up your hands uh, and can somebody say Lord repair Lord restore in the name of the Lord Jesus I mean I come to tell somebody for the first time and I come to remind others that God is the potter and we are the clay we are the vessel even when life happens and there is brokenness to our frame he knows how to pick up the pieces and put them back together in his own special way. So I come to lift up my voice on this first service to preach to you about vessels of mercy. Right. Turns to my and tell him we are vessels of mercy. Turns to my else and tell him you are a vessel of mercy. Can I let somebody know here today that even when life happens and there is brokenness to our frames, the Lord is able to mend us together again. It doesn't matter if that brokenness comes by way of your own poor choices or by past or present sin or it's through no fault of your own. Maybe some decision, some choice that somebody else made. Maybe it's what somebody else did to you. I come to tell you it doesn't matter, amen, what you have come into this place, uh, with what doesn't matter what, what way your brokenness has come. Uh, I don't care if it's through your choices. Uh, I don't care if it's through sin. Uh, I don't care if it's through what somebody else has done to you. I come to say it once again uh, that the Lord can uh, restore. I said the Lord can restore. I know I'm, I'm preaching to the choir. For some of you, I understand that this is a church uh, that believes in restoration. I'm thankful that I'm preaching at a spiritual church. I said I'm thankful that I'm preaching at a spiritual church. Uh, the Bible says, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one uh, in a spirit of meekness concerning thyself, uh, lest thou also be tempted. It's not so much uh, that you're going to be tempted with the same sin, uh, but the devil knows your number. He knows how to get you to a place where you are vulnerable. But the Bible says that those that are truly spiritual understand how not to judge, uh, how not to stick up our nose in self-righteousness and look down at somebody and condemn somebody else uh, but those who are spiritual understand uh, that I, if it wasn't for the grace of God uh, if it wasn't for the mercy of Jesus uh, if it wasn't for the cross uh, I would not be here today I said if it wasn't for Calvary if it wasn't for the blood of Jesus uh, we would not be here today so those that are spiritual we know how to come alongside of somebody and say don't worry amen God knows where you are he's about to make you into a masterpiece uh, the Bible says that we are saved by grace uh, through faith not of ourselves uh, amen hallelujah none of us can boast uh, but it is the gift of God uh, it says amen in the scriptures that we are his workmanship that's King James Version Amen. But another way to translate that word workmanship is masterpiece. Uh, we are his masterpiece. I come to tell somebody that when God is all said and done, uh, when he's all finished working on you, uh, when the trumpet sounds uh, and you're caught up to meet the Lord in the air, the angels are going to look back uh, and they're going to look at a masterpiece. Uh, they're going to be amazed at somebody who made so many mistakes. Uh, somebody, amen, who went through so many hardships of life, uh, but you made it over. You had up made up in your mind uh, that you're going to allow God to stop working on you. You're going to keep on allowing God to work on you uh, until it's all said and done. I come to tell somebody that you are a masterpiece uh, of his mercy. The Lord spoke to the prophet Jeremiah instructing him to go down to the potter's house. While there, he observed the potter working on a vessel. And this is what he saw and described in his own words. Jeremiah said, the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again another vessel as seemed good to the potter to make it. Then the Lord spoke to him concerning his people saying, Cannot I do with you as this potter, saith the Lord. Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in mine hand. Your life, I come to tell somebody today that your life is in the potter's hand. Your situation is in his hand. Can I tell some young person, some young adult here today, and can I remind all of us in this house and those watching online that your future 
is in the potter's hand. Can I say to GPC, amen, when you lift up your voice to pray that God would give you favor, can I remind you that your future, the future of this local assembly is in his hand. Can somebody lift up your hands and can somebody thank the Lord that your future is in his hands, that your life is in his hands? I mean, I just come and tell somebody that you've got to allow him to make you anew. As seems good to him. As he sees fit. He's the potter. You're the vessel. Your life is in his hand. Your future is in his hand. You just got to allow God's will to be done. You've got to allow him, amen, to do with you what he desires to do. Amen. You've got to recognize. Amen. Like the scripture says in Isaiah chapter 64 verse 8. Now, O Lord, you are our father. And we are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Can I tell somebody that you are safe? Can I let some guests know here today? Maybe you're here for the first time, or maybe you are here as a repeat guest, and you're wondering, amen, is this all right? Is this, can I, can I do this? Can I, can I trust, amen, the Lord? Can I trust this church? I come to tell you that you are safe in his hand. Heard somebody tell him this is a safe place. Can I let somebody know here today that your brokenness does not offend God? I said your brokenness does not put God off. It doesn't matter, amen, the choices that you've made. It doesn't matter the sins that you've committed, the mistakes that you've made. It does not matter what has happened in your life that has broken you. And I understand that on Sunday we try to put on our Sunday best. We try to put on our biggest smile and we want everybody to know that everything is going okay. Amen. To those that everything is going well, thank God. But for the rest of us that are keeping it real here today, I come to tell somebody, amen, the Lord has sent me here, amen, to hone in on your brokenness, uh, not to embarrass you, uh, not to put you to shame, uh, but to allow his grace and his mercy, amen, to heal some things up, uh, to mend some things back together. I come to let you know that God uh, is not turned away by your brokenness. If you bring that brokenness before him in humility, it gives him an opportunity to make you whole again. Let me say that again. If you will bring that brokenness before him in humility, it gives him an opportunity to make you whole again. Can I let somebody know that God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. I say God resists the proud. I, I appreciate, amen, this church responding to the presence of God. I, I'm so thankful that the Spirit of God was moving in this house. And I watched uh, as one gentleman laid prostrate before the Lord. He laid down in the presence of God. Uh, amen. It doesn't matter, amen, if you lay down uh, before the Lord, if you're humble in heart. Uh, amen. It's all about the posture of your heart. I come to tell somebody, if you would take whatever brokenness it is, uh, and if you would just come and bring it to the Lord, uh, I come to let you know that that is a divine opportunity for God to do something miraculous in your life. I just come and tell the devil that he is a liar. You cannot stop this church from reaching broken people. There are people who have been in bondage long enough, but we come to speak the name of the Lord Jesus Christ over this city and command those spirits to let those people go because God is going I come to let somebody in this house know that the devil has held you long enough. He's trying to tell you that you're too broken to be any good. He's trying to tell you that you're useless, that you're worthless. But I come to let hell know that you are God's greatest asset, that he's about to do something through you. Does anybody believe that in this house? Can you stand to your feet? Can somebody put your hands together? And can you lift up the name of Jesus right now? Turn somebody and tell them God's going to use your story for his glory. You may be seated. Can I remind somebody that God is attracted to brokenness? I said God is attracted to brokenness. Now please don't misunderstand me here today. 
Amen. The Lord does not condone sin. He does not agree with sin. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, choices have consequences to them. And there are some things uh, even the Lord can restore you. He can forgive you. He can wash you. He can change your life. Uh, but there are some things that are put in place by our choices. And they don't just go away when we come to Calvary. They don't just go away when we're baptized in the name of Jesus. Now the condemnation goes away. Amen. The guilty stain is wiped away by the blood of Jesus. It's no longer remembered. But I come to tell somebody that God does not condone sin. Uh, and yes, there are consequences to our choices. But can I tell somebody some good news today? Is it all right if I tell some good news here today? Where sin abounds, grace does much more abound. Now that doesn't exact, uh, excite some of you, but we sung about a man coming to pour our praise uh, on his feet. We, we sung about worshiping at his feet. Can I remind somebody here today that when Mary came in with that alabaster box uh, and she broke that Amen. That, that, that ointment, that perfume, uh, that box that that perfume was in. Uh, and she began to pour it on Jesus' feet uh, and began to, amen, wipe his feet with her hair. Amen. There were some of those that are in that place uh, that began to judge her, saying we could have used some money for something else better. But Jesus says something prophetic is happening right now. She recognizes what I'm about to do. I didn't come here to look pretty. I didn't come here to impress anybody. I came here to save a world. I'm about to go to the cross. Amen. What she is doing is preparing me for my burial. Ladies and gentlemen, there are some individuals that only come to church to spectate. But there are some individuals in this house that come with brokenness. They come to let the Lord know, hallelujah, everything that I've gone through, everything that I held on the inside, I'm going to pour it at your feet. The Bible tells us, amen, previously, there was a lady of ill repute that did the same thing. She came in and she broke, amen, uh, that, that she brought in her brokenness and she poured out her perfume and began to cry and, and wipe her uh, Jesus' feet with her hair, amen. And those who were the religious elite, uh, they looked at Jesus and said, if you were really a man of God, uh, you would know who this lady is. Uh, she's a woman of ill repute in the community. You would not even allow her to touch her feet. Uh, but Jesus just ignored uh, the... I said, Jesus just ignored the self-righteous. And he looked at the master of the house. He said, Simon, when I came into this place, did you offer me any kind of water to wash my feet? Come on, Simon. Amen. This is the South. You're supposed to have Southern hospitality. But when I came into the house, you didn't even wash my feet. But when she came into this place, she has not stopped, amen, kissing my feet and wiping it with her hair. And yes, her sins are many. Yes, her sins are many. Yes, she's messed up. Yes, she's made some mistakes. But I come to tell you, those who are forgiven of much, they love much. Amen. For some individuals in this house, uh, amen, you might have forgotten what God has done for you. Uh, you might have forgotten where the Lord has brought you from. Uh, but there are some of us in this place that remember, amen, where we used to be. Uh, there are some of us that remember that we used to be in a horrible pit. Uh, but he brought me out of a horrible pit. Amen. There's some of us, we don't understand what the pit feels like, uh, but the Lord kept us from the pit. Amen. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, I was raised in the church. Uh, I thank God I cut my teeth on the apostolic pew. Uh, there are some things I did not do in the world, but I grew up in the hood. Uh, I should be a statistic. Uh, amen. I should be dead like some of my friends. Uh, I should be behind bars like some of my gang banging friends, but I come to tell somebody that he kept me from a pit. Uh, amen. I'm not going to be in this place uh, and keep quiet uh, and hold back my I praise, uh, but I'm going to pour it out uh, upon his feet. Uh, all I have is a hallelujah. That's all I got. Uh, but hallelujah, anyhow, uh, I come to give you praise. Come on, if you're thankful for the grace that does much more abound, can you clap your hands uh, and can somebody shout hallelujah? The Bible tells us that the Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and he saved it such as be of a contrite spirit king david in his brokenness received a revelation that the sacrifices of god are a broken spirit a broken and a contrite heart oh god thou would not despise ladies and gentlemen 
Can I remind you that the sweet psalmist of Israel named David, who was a man after God's own heart, he wrote those words in brokenness from his own poor choices and his sinful decision after he took another man's wife, a man who was loyal to the country, who was loyal to the kingdom, who was fighting on the front lines, he had him murdered and took his wife. And when the prophet came and said, you are the man that has stolen another man's wife, instead of King David using his authority to kill the prophet, he took off that crown, that royal garment. He crashed in the floor from his brokenness. And it's in that brokenness that he received revelation. That God is not so much impressed by how faithful we could come Sunday after Sunday. And how we could sing the songs. And how we can give in our offerings and tithes. But the sacrifices of God include all of that. But the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. Oh God, you will not despise. If you don't hear me say anything else in this revival, somebody hear the word of the Lord right now. God will not despise your brokenness if you will bring it to him with a contrite heart. Amen. There are a lot of people that are broken, but they're not healed. There are a lot of people that are broken, but they're not forgiven. There are a lot of people that are broken, but they're not saved. But I come to tell somebody that God will not despise your brokenness if you will bring it to him in humility and with a repentant heart. Amen. Can somebody lift up your hands right now? Can somebody lift up your voice? And can you just do more than just go through the motions? But can somebody tell the Lord, I need you? I cannot make it without you, Jesus. I don't want to just come to another service, oh God. We don't want just another revival, God. But we want you to change us, oh God. And we desire that you will heal our brokenness. Come nigh unto us. Can I tell somebody that not all brokenness is a result of sin? I said not all brokenness is a result of sin. But life happens to all of us. Life has a way of breaking us. If you've heard me tell this testimony, amen, I can't stop telling it, amen, but in 1994, I had dreams of playing in the NBA. I had hoop dreams. They were false dreams, ladies and gentlemen. I was not going to make it to the NBA. But me and the, the deceased great basketball player, Kep, uh, Kobe Bryant, we both were born the same day, the same year. And he played for the team I always wanted to play for, the Lakers. But I had hoop dreams. I wanted to make it to the NBA. I wasn't going to make it, but that was my dream. But at church camp, I broke my leg. Camp Gardner Creek. It's Brother Evan Miller here. Brother Miller, amen. He was youth president at the time, and he can remember when I broke my leg, and I was so upset at God because the next week was basketball camp. Matter of fact, my high school went on to win the state championship here in Tennessee. So needless to say, as a teenager, I was upset at God. I was mad at God. But it was through that brokenness that the Lord began to work on me. I was on crutches during part of my 11th grade year. But in a hundred soul revival that happened January of 1995, the Lord miraculously healed my leg. Two broken, broken bones and a hairline fracture. Amen. But as the Spirit of God began to move in that revival, in that service, just like it was moving here today, I heard a voice speak to me and say, Ethan, if you'll get out of the aisle and praise me, I will heal your leg. When I heard that voice the third time, I finally obeyed. Because some of us, the Lord's got to, you know, he's got to get through our hard head. But ladies and gentlemen, the Lord miraculously healed me. I'm going to tell somebody that I believe that God is a miracle worker. You can't tell me that he cannot heal. But it was during that time the Lord began to deal with me. Amen. I came here to Nashville, went to Tennessee State University. And it was there, amen, my one year that I was there that God gave us revival. Matter of fact, yesterday I talked to my dear and precious roommate who's now serving the Lord. He's a licensed minister in the Wisconsin District with the United Pentecostal Church. And we were talking yesterday, amen, but God gave us revival at Tennessee State University. But that would not have happened. If I had not have gone through that time of brokenness, uh, can I tell somebody in this place that some of you have been broken by divorce? You've been broken by dysfunction. 
You've been broken by abuse. Uh, you've been broken by sickness and disease. You've been broken by depression. There have been some young people during this pandemic. Uh, amen. You've seen your dreams broken. Uh, amen. There are some who have been broken by financial misfortune. But can I tell you once again that Jesus uh, can heal your brokenness. I said Jesus uh, can heal your brokenness. Someone you've been saying far too long like the psalmist David. When he said in Psalms 30, 31 verse 12, I have been forgotten like one who is dead. I have become like a broken vessel. But I come to remind you here today that God is our heavenly father. He is the potter and he knows how to mend you back together. So that you don't have to feel forgotten. You don't have to feel like, amen, a dead person. You don't have to feel, amen, like a broken vessel. Yes, you may be broken, but I can remind you, amen, David also said these words. He declared in Psalms 147, verse number 3, that God heals the brokenhearted and he binds up their wounds. Can I tell somebody here in this house that the potter wants to put you back together again? I said the potter wants to put you back uh, together again. You might feel broken. Uh, you might feel forgotten. Uh, but he knows how to put you back together. Can somebody lift up your hands? Uh, and can somebody lift up your voice right now? Can somebody lift up your voice right now in the name of the Lord Jesus? Here in the passage of scripture that we read in Romans chapter 9, the apostle Paul mentions different types of vessels as he writes about God's sovereignty and how he chooses to deal with them. Paul writes, does not the potter have the right to make out of the same lump of clay some pottery for special purposes and some for common use? Let me just say here today that Paul isn't saying here in this passage of scripture, in this chapter of Romans 9, that God just automatically determines who will be saved and who will be lost. Amen. God doesn't operate like that. He doesn't say, well, you can be saved, but you cannot be saved. You are going to make it to heaven, but you're definitely going to hell. That's not how God does. So the apostle Paul is not saying that God just automatically determines who will be saved and who will be lost. But he made us free moral agents. And he gives us the power of choice. I said he gives us the power of choice. Amen. Your decision whether or not to believe in him and live for him determines how he will deal with you. I said your de decision of whether or not you're going to believe in who Jesus is and whether or not you will live for him will determine how he deals with you. Can I remind somebody today that the only entity, amen, that has a predestined, amen, future of salvation is the church. I said, amen, the only institution here on earth uh, that is predestined to salvation is uh, the church. Uh, that's why it pays to stay uh, in the church. I said it pays to remain uh, in the church. Turn somebody, tell them, stay in the church. So what Paul is writing here is a reminder to us that God is sovereign and he can have mercy on whoever he wants to have mercy on. I said, God can have mercy on whoever he desires uh, to have mercy on. Anyone who chooses to live for him and to serve him, no matter who they are or what they've done or where they come from, uh, he can have mercy on them. You might not want the person sitting next to you to be saved because they get on your everlasting nerve. You might think that the individual come walk in this amen sanctuary, that you know all about them. You know all the, the evil that they've done. But if they come in this house and they turn their hearts towards God, if they come to the front and altar of repentance, if they're baptized in water in the precious name of Jesus, if they are filled with the wonderful gift of the Holy Spirit, it does not matter if you like them or not, God can have mercy on whoever he wants to have mercy on. So I just come to tell somebody here today, it does not matter how broken you are. He can make you one of those vessels of mercy. You can become a vessel of mercy. Can we stand all over this house? We're going to have a good time tonight. The Lord is going to bless Tuesday. 
Wednesday. God's going to do some great things. I'm going to have the better half with me, so we're really going to have a good church here. But I just come to minister to somebody today and tell you that our God is a merciful God. Over and over, the Bible reminds us that God is full of mercy. Yes, He is a God of judgment. And everyone will stand before Him in judgment one day. But He is also compassionate and gracious. He is both holy and merciful at the same time. When God revealed His name to Moses, the first thing that he said about his name was that he was merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and in truth. When God revealed his divine name to Moses and let Moses know that he is the only one, the self-sufficient one, the holy one, the creator, the maker of the universe, he then let Moses know that he's a gracious God, that he's a merciful God, that he is patient, long-suffering, and he is abundant in goodness and in truth. His mercy endureth forever. I said his mercy endures forever. Oh, can somebody lift up your hands right now? Can somebody lift up your voice right now? Can somebody just begin to thank God for his mercy? In just a moment, the praise team is going to come and sing. In just a moment, we're going to open up this front for anybody that wants to come. But I want to can somebody just lift up your voice and say his mercy. His mercy endures forever. Your mercy is here today, Lord. It's new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness, oh God. Thank you for your long suffering. Thank you for being patient with us, oh God. Thank you for being abundant in goodness. And in truth, we worship you today, Jesus. We magnify you, Lord. The psalmist said in Psalms 103, he said, The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and plenteous in mercy. And then he says these words, He has not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as high as heaven is above the earth for as the heaven is high above the earth so great is his mercy toward them that fear him as far as the east is from the west <laughs> so far has he removed our transgressions from us ladies and gentlemen that might not mean a whole lot to you but that means a whole lot to this preacher here today I'm not perfect in this pulpit but I am somebody who is a recipient of the mercy of God you're looking at a vessel of mercy who's been broken but who's been repaired and put back together who's been restored by the goodness and the mercy of God he has not dealt with me according to my past he has not dealt with me. Is anybody thankful for the mercy of God today? If my eyes are not betraying me, I see my cousin Brian McNeese here. Amen. Is that you, Brian? Can you wave your hands? Oh, my Lord, that's my cousin. Amen. So good to have my cousin, his family here. Sister Nicole, can you clap your hands and thank the Lord for them? His mother is my mom's aunt. And my aunt and my cousin and I, we went to Tennessee State University together. He remembers those revivals. Amen. They're part of True Way Apostolic Church, Church of our Lord Jesus Christ. But my cousin knows that God has not dealt with us according to our past mistakes. <laughs> Don't ask him for too many stories from my, my Tennessee State days. My days when I had one foot in the church, one foot out of the church. But thank God for my cousin. They were faithful to God. Thank God for Sister Nicole. That's a prayer warrior, his wife, his daughter that's with them. But God has not dealt with us according to our past. <laughs> Amen. There's somebody here today. You think that God's going to knock you over the head like a Nashville Predator hockey player. That's not the kind of God that we serve. 
He's not here to point out your past. He's not here to point out your sins, your mistakes. He's not here to magnify your brokenness and, and make fun and put you to shame. No. That's not how our God deals with us. That's not how he deals with broken people. But as far as the east is from the west, you cannot, amen, determine where, how far the east is from the west. That's how far God will remove the sins of those who would trust in him. I come to tell somebody here today, if you will put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ and who he is and what he did for you at Calvary, and if you will repent of your sins, if you will ask God to forgive you of your past, amen, if you have been baptized in his wonderful name, if you have had your sins removed as far as the east is from the west, uh, amen. If you have not yet experienced that today, you can. Uh, you can be baptized in his name. Uh, and when you go down in water, it's more than just getting wet. Uh, but when his name is called over your life, the blood that he shed for you 2,000 years ago uh, will wash away every sin uh, that you've ever committed. Okay, somebody clap your hands if you've been baptized in his name. If you are here today, if you are here today, you have been filled with the Holy Spirit. If you have received the wonderful gift of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, uh, as the Spirit gives you the utterance, can I tell you that the reason why that happened to you uh, is because God is merciful uh, and he has made you a vessel of mercy. I said it's because he's made you a vessel of his mercy. It's not because you're good enough. Uh, it's not because you're worthy enough. None of us are worthy enough, uh, but because he is worthy, he makes us a vessel of mercy. The Bible says that we have this treasure in earthen vessels, in vessels of mercy, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. So I come to tell somebody, if you have not yet received the wonderful gift of God's Spirit, you can today. If you will believe, you can receive. Amen. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to get good enough to get God. You get God to get good. But if you would just simply humble yourself and give Him your brokenness, he will restore you into a vessel of mercy. Jesus said, I will have mercy and not sacrifice. For I have not come to call the righteous to repentance. But I come to call the sinners. Amen. I cannot tell you here that the Lord is calling the broken this morning. He's calling those who will humble themselves before the potter. So as the praise team comes right now, and as they prepare to see, I just come to tell somebody in this house, or maybe watching online in your house, that the Lord wants to restore you. He wants to rejoin you. He wants to renew you. He wants to heal you. He wants to have mercy on you. He wants to make you a vessel of mercy and fill you with this heavenly treasure when you submit to him. So somebody just submit to the potter. Somebody just submit to the work of his hand. Don't be afraid in just a moment to step out of your seat and to make your way to the front. Amen. But just trust in him. He's not going to hurt you. He's going to heal you. Somebody here today. Amen. When I open up this front, don't be afraid to bring your brokenness. Nobody is going to judge you. You're in a spiritual church. You're a part of, amen, of a spiritual assembly. Nobody's going to talk about you. Amen. Maybe, a matter of fact, somebody's going to come alongside of you. Somebody's going to come with you. Amen. They're going to meet you here. God is going to meet you here at the front uh, and he's going to do a work in your life. So I come to, amen, to ask somebody as the praise singers begin to sing. Uh, amen. If this word has resonated with your spirit, uh, if the Lord has been speaking to you, can you just step out of where you are? Come on, somebody, don't be afraid, uh, but just bring your brokenness. Come on, somebody, in humility.